Coming up today on Two Feather Survival, we're going to be talking about tri-sticks and a few different types of knives that I routinely carry with me uh, for wood projects, for carving projects, and just to have as part of my everyday carry kit to improvise tools and to improvise things that would make a long-term survival scenario more comfortable or to make camp life more comfortable. Stay with me. So the tri-stick project that Morris Kahansky kind of pioneered is going to incorporate a lot of useful carving methods all into one project. Things like how to carve a tent stake or a root stripper or a digging stick. How to then round off or mushroom cap the top edge for your tent stake which will help to make that stick last longer as we drive it into the ground with a wooden baton or a wooden mallet or even a, a, a stone mallet if that's something that you're looking to manufacture in the woods. I've spent a lot of time recently looking into primitive style survival and stone tools and it's amazing what you can actually accomplish with a lot of those tools. So I'm going to go ahead and clean off my working space here, set some of our blades aside for now come back to them shortly. have a baton here and we're going to utilize that a lot this evening with our carving projects. A baton is just that. It's just a beaten stick. Nothing fancy. This is one that I've just broken off from a larger piece so it's not even really cut. It's just broken off and it is simply allowing me to then take one of our blades and hammer that blade or baton that blade through a stick. So that's as easy as that. I've got a kind of a block of wood here as an anvil. I have my hammer and I have my blade that I'm going to set here on this piece of wood. So now I have an easy way and a safe way too, which is a very important thing to consider, to drive a knife through a hunk of wood. Now, what that does is allows me to cut off that piece of wood. You see it's still pretty green, so it's kind of come apart on me some here. And make a clean cut. Here's another example here. A clean cut through a stick. And that way I'm not out here swinging wildly with a blade, which then could cause a mechanical injury. And that is the biggest thing that I do not want to cause. If I make a mechanical injury or a whoops or a big boo-boo out in a wilderness setting or worst case a survival setting and I'm miles from nowhere, that's something that I have to then consider. I'll probably be filming soon a separate piece on some of the emergency supplies that you should always have in your bug out bag or go bag, whatever it is that you want to call it. Or just if you're a hunter and just enjoy a good day of hunting, what is some of the basic first aid things that you should always have within your pack? There'll be a separate video coming up shortly. So, this batoning method, there's nothing really fancy to it. It simply allows me a way to take a knife and go through to make a straight cut through a piece of wood. There's other ways to do that, and that's actually one of the first cuts that we would look at in a tri-stick project. And as you see on this, and I'll give you a closer view here in just a second, the end of this stick is kind of chewed down. Well, they call that a beaver chew. As what a beaver chew is, is if I have a stick or a small sapling tree, whatever that case is, as it grows up from the ground, I could take my knife and work my way all the way around at about a 45 degree angle into that stick going down. So is what that's going to do is I continually work my way around that sapling tree or around the stick that I'm trying to make smaller, I will finally get to a point where it can very easily snap off. That snap off point, sometimes they call that a rosette because it kind of looks like the petals of a flower here at the base where I've made those cuts, but it allows me to take a larger piece of wood 
and then break it off into a more manageable size or a project size. I could do that one of two different ways. I could again do a beaver chew, which would just be a 45 degree cut down through, or I could take my knife, bring it into the piece of wood, and then with my baton, take and baton through that and make a clean cut based off from where that baton strike is on the back of the blade. Either way, I'm taking a larger piece of material and bringing it down to a smaller piece, which would be a more manage manageable size. All right, guys, well, just as a couple kind of quick blade options. The one that I have here, make sure I get that into, into shot for you guys. This is a tool called a Makatagan or a hook knife. This was made by Mora Knives. It's a fabulous knife. It's a very high carbon steel blade. Um, great for carving things like this, which would be spoons. I can get in there, make a good carve, get a good bowl or a belly on the spoon. Or if I wanted to manufacture a cup or a bowl or anything like that, that's the blade to do that with. The other blade here is one that I've made. This is my Nesmic theme knife. And this knife is actually what I utilize to make my first tri-stick with that we'll talk about here in just a second. Earlier today, I showed you this knife, which this is actually my bushcraft buddy or companion. I'm still working on the name on that. It's an unfinished knife. This is a 1095 high carbon steel blade. And this blade is actually something that I've really started to enjoy and I've really put through its paces and made sure that I could beat one of these up and not have it fail, which is something that I have not had happen yet. So this knife is actually one that I have really started to enjoy as a basic small chore carving knife as a secondary tool option. This knife has actually become a fabulous blade for me. I've really enjoyed this knife and I've made another video that we've talked about some of the other types of cuts, but it's all done with this exact knife and this has just been my go-to large or mid-size, I guess I probably should say, style blade. I'll move some of these blades out of the way so I can talk to you about what it is that we're going to be doing today. And what that project is is something called a tri-stick. So I've got some various types of material here. Now, this is what Morris Kahansky called a tri-stick. And really this project is nothing more than taking a piece of wood and it doesn't really matter what size that you wanna work with. You can work with all kinds of different types of wood and different sizes. Some obviously is gonna be better than others. But with this carving project, it's teaching you how to do a couple things. First and foremost, it gives me the option to do many cuts that I would find myself needing in a wilderness survival setting. I've got cut down here, which as you see, that's your classic seven notch. I've got this area here, which is what that is, is a reduction where you come halfway through your material or to a set depth. And then you remove that, and I have now a reduction. I have a V-notch here. Uh, this allows me to do many different things with it. I can make it either a steep V or more of a U if I'm looking for uh, pack frame style construction with that. I have a hook for a pot hanger. I have a cabin notch where you come straight down in on both sides and then bring that material back out. That's for a lot of building projects or for pack frame construction as well. And then at the end, I've got a basic point or chisel. And as what I would do is actually carve this back. And that would then allow me to have something that's called a, a root stripper or a digging tool, whichever it is that you're looking to create, or a tent stake. And that also is kind of why this is rounded off. So as I hammer these down, into the ground, this will help keep that point a little bit better off for us. It won't tend to mushroom out like some do. Now, I can go with a small stick or I can scale all this up depending on the size of task that I need. So as you see here, I've got my root digging tool. I can V this back 
and make that a root stripping tool as well. And if I bring the other end down, you see that I've kind of brought that back out to a mushroom point or mushroom cap, whichever you prefer to call that. And that then allows me to have this as a tent stake if I was to scale this down no matter what the size is or if it's uh, something I needed a larger version with and have this whole piece of material then that is all up to the creation that I am looking to fabricate at that given time. So why is it important to learn how to do things like a tri-stick? Well if I take the time and practice and learn how to make these various cuts while I don't need them, if I get to a situation where I all of a sudden need to fabricate something, these cuts are now going to come secondary nature to me. They're not going to have to be something that I have to go about reinventing the wheel to figure out how it is to manufacture something. The other thing that you'll find too, and uh, I'll put this blade back up there for now, if I work on these projects in a backyard or just a basic camp setting when I don't need them, I'm going to learn a lot about what my skill level is at and where it's at, I guess I should say. And also, if that knife is something that is going to work for me when I need it to. A couple of things that I found, I used a, uh, a Benchmade knife to practice this exact drill with. And I found that the Benchmade rubbed my finger pretty much raw and it just was not really that comfortable of a knife. The scales on the knife were a little bit too small, at least for my hand, and it just wasn't really comfortable. So then I tried it with my Nesmic, and I found that I had a lot more finite control utilizing a blade like that to manufacture these type of sticks. So then I took and used a knife that had no scales on it just to see if it could be done, and it could. And again, it was more of a comfort type factor where this knife just really wasn't comfortable, but it did a great job at cutting. So those are all things that this project is going to kind of look to teach you and give you a basis of knowledge that you can then pull from when you actually need to have these type of things work in the woods. So there's nothing wrong with being out in your backyard, which is where I am today, and learn how to manufacture these type of items. All right, so I've got our new material up here. This is some um, dogwood that I had recently cut down in the backyard here as I was cleaning up some of the backyard. First cut we're going to look to make is this wedge point, chisel point, whatever you choose to call it, cut. Obviously as you can tell from here is all we're going to do is take and remove material at a 45 degree angle off from both sides of our project medium. So I'm going to find a side that I want to start that at and I'm going to just simply start carving. Now, as you start your carving, make sure that we have a good place to work, that we're not going to be carving into our body or into our leg or anything like that. And you get comfortable with just simply allowing the blade to work through the material. So I'm going to carve on this side at a 45 degree angle towards the, pr the front of the, the stick. I'm going to try to keep this as flat as I can. I'm going to come over here on the back side and carve this at about that same 45 degree angle down to meet that back point. So instead of me boring you with how many other minutes of cutting that that's going to be, I'll be right back. All right, gang, well, we're getting down here now where this is about where I want it to be. Remember another style of carving. Take my knife and I can lock my knife in and simply now move the project piece back and forth while I keep the knife still. This gives me very controlled, very precise cuts. As you see, even after I've been beating this knife up for the last several days, it's still razor sharp and it will get me those nice small curls, which you're seeing here, which if this was a drier piece of material, all of those curls would make for great kindling and for great fire lighting. So this side of the project is my root digging tool and root stripping tool. So is what I want to do next is now that I've gotten this down, I don't want to go down too far because then this would make this point fragile and easily broken. But the idea of a root digger 
is if I run this into the ground and that my plant that I want to dig is in this area, this would allow me to then pry up at the base of that root. So I've already got a good improvised tool for that. How do I make this better? Well, what I can do is take and cut a notch and I don't want to make it too wide. I want to make kind of a shallow V cut right here at the base of this. So I can do this one of a few ways. I can simply drop my blade in there, get my beaten stick, my AKA my baton that we spoke of earlier, and then just drive this through. And I want to drive that through at about a 45 degree angle. As I get back in there and you see it split a little bit, that's okay. Remember we have good enough, best enough, close enough, well that's close enough. It is what it is. It's probably going to break on you a little bit anyways when you get down in there. Now that I've got that channel started for that V, I can utilize my blade, get that back in there and I can cut this out some. Now if I had cordage, I could come back in and tighten all this down and stop this from splitting further, but it'll work for what we need it to. And if we need another one, we just go make another one. That's why when you do tri-stick projects, that's the idea of the game is we're trying to create something. The other thing that we spoke of earlier too is the simple fact that I'm in my backyard and this is where I want to make the mistakes of my projects. All right, so we're about there. So now I have a V carved into my stick here and it comes down to a well tapered point. So now is what would happen if I had a root, this root goes into this groove here and I can now strip off layers of bark. Make sure I'm showing you guys this here. So now, so now guys, with my root digging tool, this simply would go into that V, that groove there, and I would be able to then strip off bark from a root that I'm looking as a, an edible plant or whatever it is I'm looking to, to harvest. This then becomes a makeshift tool. Now, it's a lot easier for me to take a knife, especially a secondary option blade like what I have here, create this because now I'm not going to continue to wear this down and as you see although it's sharp enough to pull off green bark it's not sharp enough to cut me so now my chances of mechanical injury have now gone down quite a bit so there's one of the first cuts that you can look at making with a tri stick the other thing that we could do is I could bring all this down to a sharp point now I've got a stake I've got a uh, a potential spear point. Uh, I've got things that I could use for larger game traps and that's all part of this carving project. So this can be modified just because I've shown you how to just make a root digger doesn't mean that I need to always stay with that. I can modify this into different carving projects. What we're going to do now, we're going to flip all this over, I'll come to the other side where I did my baton cut and now is all I'm going to do is take and mushroom cap this all off. Mushroom caps are beneficial because it stops the wood from splitting back. The other thing that that could be beneficial for is for the bottom cut of a pack frame. I don't want to have a sharp rounded or sharp cornered, I guess I should say, stick cutting into the bottom of my back. So I'd want a way to round that off. The other thing, if I made this a sharp stake point on the other end and I was going to use this for a makeshift tent stake or anything of that nature or for a trap engine or for a cooking set whichever thing that I'm looking to create as I hammer this into the ground with a mushroom cap at the end it is less chance that I'm going to split this back if I left that cleanly cut there I got more of a chance as I baton this into the ground to break that mushroom out or to break that end cap out more and it won't last as long. So here's an easy way to make this a little bit more fit and finished and to give me something that if it's a bottom of a pack frame it's not going to be cutting into my back. 
So again, not a hard cut to make, fairly easy cut to make. So I'm just gonna work around, clean that up. Notice here that kind of using the back of the thumb, pushing the blade through. I'm not pushing hard, I'm kind of letting that bite in and letting the blade do its job. All right, so as you see on my guide here, this is what we just carved just a second ago. Just is just a larger scale. And I've got my small scale here is a seven cut or a seven notch. What are seven notches good for? Well, if I'm gonna do any trap building, and trap creation for a fine trigger, I've gotta know how to carve a good seven notch. It's really an easy cut to make. We've just got a 90 degree cut that comes in from the stick and then a four, about a 45 degree cut that's going to cut back to that cut. Easiest way to start that is to put your blade on your stick. Keep that as a much of a 90 degree angle that you can and simply baton into the wood. You don't want to go all the way through. You just want to go far enough. If we need to tweak this later, we can. So now is what I'm going to do is I'm going to start cutting back to that 90 degree cut. This could be at about a 45 degree angle. That's going to be something that you're going to have to change depending on how fine of a trigger point that you want to make your set work with. Notice that since I've made this stop cut, when I cut back to it, it stops exactly where I wanted it to stop. And this will start our seven notch. So, just gonna keep carving back to that. I can make this as long as I need it to be. It will depend on the trap set that I'm looking to create with this. But I'm just gonna keep cutting back into that. The other thing that you're gonna find as you work on these tri-sticks is you're gonna realize that you'll utilize your knife and different portions of your knife all throughout this cutting process. And those are good things to kind of find and figure out as you start to do these projects. It's not the time to do it when I'm out in the woods and actually need to make one of these things work. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this out a little bit more and we'll be right back. All right, just quickly kind of finish cleaning this out. And again, just not pushing hard, letting the knife kind of do its work. As I feel my way through this, I can kind of tell where there's high spots and low spots, and I'm going to just continue just making small shavings, not looking at this point to take off a whole bunch of material, but just letting the blade work its way through there. So, now we've got our basis for our seven notch. Go back to my other stick here, show you some of the purpose of this here. So if I have two sticks, and this is my trigger stick, these two notches then kind of lock in here. The small one would need to be larger, and I would make that deeper, because I want them to set in as deep as I can to get them to lock in there. There's other ways to do this. I could add a toggle in this way, that as when the fish or animal takes bait or starts messing with this, this comes off this way, and then that way the engine has a point to kind of catch from. But that is a seven notch. The other thing that this could very quickly be become would be a hanger. Uh, there's actually a better cut that I'll show you for that, but there's a lot of different options for this. So that's our next cut that we're looking to create here is a basic seven notch. The more of a right angle that I get the top connected to the rest with the more hair trigger I'm going to have on my trap. So that's the, the part that you really want to kind of spend some time working on. Once you get both pieces together, you're going to need to kind of finesse that cut a little bit more depending on the other piece of wood as you get that in there. But that gives you an idea of what your seven knot should look like. Next cut that we're going to look to make, we have our seven notch and we come down to what is known as a reduction. Now a reduction we could get as fancy as we want with it. This one I just kept round. I could make this a square reduction and make this instead of a round piece in here a square piece. 
I could get real fancy and really look to impress with my carving ability and make a reduction and then make another space in between that. It just depends on what it is that you're looking to carve. The more advanced you get with your carving techniques, the better off you're going to be. So we're going to look to put a reduction in about that area right there. So the easiest way to start that is to simply score, keeping it as about as straight as you can, score your wood all the way around. I'm going to start here and just score this back. So that gives me a stop cut, just like the stop cut that we used up here with our seven notch, gives me a point of stoppage. So as I work my way back to that, that bark is going to stop at that point and then come straight off. Uh, coming back to our stop cut, and I wind up with a fairly clean looking line. I'll turn this over and work back to our stop cut. And give us another fairly clean looking line. Remember in the good words of Ron Hood, the late great Ron Hood, it's good enough. Close enough, best enough. Now well, we're pretty much close enough. So now I'm going to take and remove that media back out from there. Now depending on how deep I want to go with this is going to depend on how deep of a stop cut that I make. I can make this a shallow cut like I just did here and just to do a reduction of the first part of the bark layer or I can come back through here and make this even deeper. It will really depend on what it is that we're looking to create. This is very good for, depending on how deep I make it again, if I wanted to wrap cordage back around this to create some sort of a, a toggling device, anything like that, or just to make a hiking stick a little bit more friendly to a hand, put some 550 cord in here or natural cordage and wrap that back around. Really, there's a lot of different things that we could utilize this cut for. Those are only a few. All right, so there was our reduction. Now we come into a V cut. A v cut's fairly easy. 45, 45. Take your knife. You can either work it just by working through the material, or I can lay the knife in at a 45 degree angle, get our any dandy baton, Cut that out, I come back into this side at a 45 degree angle, a little bit above, and I do that. So now I can keep working this and get this to the desired depth and size of whatever project that I'm looking to create. These type of cuts are very good if we're looking to join in two different types of wood materials for pack frame construction, anything of that nature where I would want a piece to lay in and fit in like a cabin style notch where it's not going to move. Once I bind this together with cordage, those two sticks will be permanently affixed. I can make this even better where we have our notch here and have them both lay in and now that will make that even more of a secure hold. I could do more of this type of a notch and where that then meets here and I have two flat points and a flat point in here, well then now I really have a good tie-in point. If I was going to make some sort of like a, oh let's say a Roycroft pack frame, anything like that. So that's your basic V-notch. Next notch that we're going to look to create is for, if this was part of a cook set and I wanted to hang in a pot or a kettle or anything like that as I'm making a cook set to have this be my hanging stick, I'm going to take the knife and cut across. So get that laid back in there. I have my baton and now I'm just going to make an X. There's one side of the X and coming back from the other side, make the other part of the X. So, now all I want to do is just take these pieces out. Alright, 
So after you make your cross cut, what you're going to do is leave one point and you're going to decide which side that you want your hanger pot hanger on and pretty much cut the media back towards that. So that's all I'm doing now is just cleaning all that out. And these can be used for a lot of different reasons. Uh, one big reason would be if someone was going to make a cook set and they wanted a way to hang one of their kettles on, a hook like this would be a great point to hang that kettle from. Very easily carved, doesn't take much in the way of skill or even uh, having to have a really super knife. Any knife will do. And that's pretty much all that you have to do to create that. It's the same thing that I have here as well. And you can see how this would work. If I had a stick hanging from our cook set, this would give me a notch to then hang that item from. So I could then adjust it as I need to do so. So guys, that's some of the basic cuts. The other one that I haven't shown you, I'm kind of out of space here on the uh, stick that I have, is something that looks like this out of the way here. This is your basic cabin notch. Cabin notch is created by coming straight down in to about the halfway point, coming straight down in to about the halfway point, putting the knife in or just cutting back to that and then just making that point flat. This is a great notch if I wanted to have another flat piece of material where I then bring that in and bind those two together. I've got another easy way to build a pack frame and put all that together. So, try sticks. Something that you want to try out. Work on them in your backyard. Work on them around the campsite that you are at for a given weekend. Make sure that you do it safely. Make sure that you're understanding the various cuts that you're trying to learn to make. And have fun with it, guys. There's a lot of different ways that you can work on this type of project. There's a lot of different cuts that you could do. Just let your imagination run a little wild. It's always very rewarding when you see that you have had the ability to make something on your own and then be able to reap the benefits of it. I do have a book that I'm working on that will detail a lot of these carving techniques that I showed you today and others. And I hope to have that available to you all as quick as I can. It'll be a small booklet style production won't be anything too fancy but it'll be at least a starting point to let you understand some of these different cuts as we start looking at trap sets and trap building you'll start to see a lot of these cuts again and realize how it is that they all start to play together that's all the time i got for today guys i hope you've enjoyed this simple project the tri-stick project remember to check out morris kahansky's book bushcraft and also check out his youtube channel Karamat Wilderness Ways. Have a great day, guys. Remember to keep your knife sharp and your go bags close. Until next time, we'll see you.